Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's great to be with you on a Monday. We hope the weekend treated you well. We have a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous program lined up for you. Bashir, a good friend of this program, Bashir Khalafa and his wonderful wife, Catherine, are going to join us here in a matter of moments. Uh, Bashir's Taverna, his restaurant is amazing. Um, I've spent many a fantastic lunch at his restaurant with my mentor and good friend, Bill Nitchman. Um, the hospitality and his sense of graciousness and kindness and positivity um, always strike me as soon as I walk into his restaurant. His food is always fresh, affordable, and priced well and delicious. Um, I really feel the sense of family and hospitality when I walk into Bashir's. We're gonna welcome them shortly. I'm excited to showcase their entrepreneurial journey here in Charlottesville in Central Virginia, how they've seen Charlottesville, specifically the downtown mall change in their time. I think if you know anything about downtown Charlottesville, then you know um, the smiling gentleman, um, Bashir, who, who, who just greets people um, with an energy that I find contagious every time I meet him, always consistent with his positivity as well. Um, let's thank some of the folks that make the program possible. First, one of our fantastic clients is Interstate Pest and Service Companies. This is another locally owned, family owned business. This business started in 1969 with the first generation. It was one man and one truck, his name Mr. Wells. In 1969, he launched his business. He would head to the closest payphone after servicing his first customer in 1969. He would call his second customer and say, may I come see you now? Today, this business, almost 100 employees in a four generation strong family owned business with a commonwealth wide footprint. I salute businesses like that because they're making our community better. I admire them and hope one day our business with our wife and son involved can one day you know, follow that suit and be a second generation strong business. One of our other favorite clients, Dr. Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine is a part of this program. Whether it's chiropractic care, sports medicine, or physical therapy, Dr. Wagner and his team are changing people's lives. Who's got your back? Dr. Wagner's got your back. Um, let's go to the studio camera and let's welcome Bashir and Catherine to the show. You guys are now on camera. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Thank Enjoy. you for Good having us here. here. Uh, it's truly my pleasure, and I truly, truly mean this. Um, Bashir, I'm going to throw this to you and then get out of the way. Um, introduce us to you, um, the restaurateur, the, you, the man, you, the husband, you, the family man, you, the grandfather. Anywhere you want to go, Bashir, the show is yours. And, the, and me, the husband to a great lady. Great grandfather. Yeah. Great, great grandfather. grandfather. Yeah, that's true. Love that. that. Great grandfather. Basically, uh, I don't like to talk much about myself, which is not true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, I love Charlottesville. When first, in, first time Kathy and I decided to move to Charlottesville was when we got the message from uh, our daughter, and my grandson, and my son in law, so to move to Sh business. We both doing well in Charlottesville. I was City University of New York teaching, and I was working in the food business. My wife was an art historian and curator. It took us a year before we made a decision. We used to come and visit our daughter who went to UVA as a student, and uh, Charlottesville grows on you. At that time, it was quiet. There, uh, there weren't many restaurants. Traffic was fantastic. Not highly any cars on the road. People were super polite. You can leave your door open, no worry. You go to a supermarket uh, with a giant, whatever, leave your car, you don't have to close it. You can leave the door to your house open, you don't have to worry. When I started the business, I remember for a few years, we didn't have one bad check. Almost everybody on the mall, except 97. One guy passed check, he was not from Charlottesville. He was just passing there. So basically, I came into Charlottesville with Kathy. We opened the business, which more or less was uh, not what I intended. And then we went on our own, opened our, our uh, own uh, business, Bashir Slaverna. And uh, it turned out to be, we were blessed to be in this community. When did you first arrive to Charlottesville? Charlottesville, I moved, uh, my wife came first, you know, to take care of the housing and everything. And I joined her in 96, exactly. Okay. In 96, I moved and I built with my own hand, a place called Blackstone in Albemarle uh, Shopping Center. Okay. That's how it all started. Okay. So tw almost 25 years? Oh, close to that, yeah. 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 First, we opened that place uh, called uh, Blackstone Coffee, and then we moved to the, to the downtown mall. 
we opened a, a place called Bashir's Gourmet Takeout. Okay. It was called also the longest restaurant in, uh, according to the, the local uh, Guinness Book of World Records, because we started with a small section and we kept on expanding to the back, to the back. And then the city was kind enough to offer us the, the present uh, location. I love it. I love well, it. Well, basically, we were two romantics okay. from New yes. York, and we loved food and loved cooking. Okay. And, and that was what brought us here. And, of course, our, grand, um, our daughter, who went to UVA and married Oliver Asher, sure. a football player. Andrea and Oliver Asher. Yes. Right? That's, who, that's how I got to know these fine folks. Uh, my first job out of the University of Virginia was a sports writer at the Daily Progress, and I covered their oldest grandson, right? Is he your oldest? That's right, yes. Yes. Alex. And He's he was awesome. a standout football player and, and a, a bruiser under the hoop in basketball for the Western Iowa basketball team, just a fantastic athlete. I want to throw this to you. Um, New York City, you're an art curator? Yes. You're I living was. the life in the Big Apple? Yes. I mean, how tough was it for you to move from New York City to Charlottesville, because they're very different. Yes, it is. We love New York City. We still love New York City, but our love for our family was a little bit stronger than New York City's love for New York. Okay. And our daughter, uh, Andrea, she is a nurse at Martha Jefferson, a delivery and surgery nurse. She delivered over 1,000 kids here in Charlottesville. A lot of us, a lot of them are our customers now. <laughs> and uh, so we're all part of this community that we love so much. Uh, so. No, it was not that. It was not that difficult to move here. What was the conversation with you and Bashir when you guys were in New York City and you're like, he's a professor at yeah. New York University. He was teaching, yeah. Yeah, you're an art yes. curator. What was the chat like? That conversation. The chat was, like? honey, let's go out. Which restaurant we're gonna go that we love? Because <laughs> we no, love actually, food. <laughs> I was, um, I was the one who was reluctant for two reasons. I okay. was doing well musically and also in my, my field too. Mm -hmm. So I was reluctant until I heard that it's not a plug. I came to Charlottesville and I heard WTJU and I loved the programs. It was varied from my favorite music, jazz, ethnic, <coughs> classic. I said, this is a town for us. Because initially, forgive me guys, I came in with this preconceived notion that it's a small town God versus New York. And then uh, Kathy, as a very persuasive as she is, convinced me, I get, but we decided, I'm glad we made that move, I loved it. What was the stigma you had of Charlottesville um, when you were in New York City? Uh, music wise, yeah. like, you know, I was in, into jazz, ethnic music, uh, classical, whatever, and then I think it's ignorance. You can't just make up your mind, go because you heard of something about this, the sound, and you have to admit there are some kind of uh, uh, rumors about the sound. Sure, sure. That, that we were like bombarded with by people who work with us. And then we came to Charlottesville and said, gee, where all that came from? I love Charlottesville. The people, the community, I made friends. Some of them are outstanding. You know Roger was in it? Sure. He's, He's come on the show many times. He's amazing. Oh, He's amazing. Yeah, he really is. Name? Bill Nitchman, your mentor. Yes. He's a great guy. I yes. mean, there are so many incredible people here. Incredible. I love it. Claire Francis says hello, guys. She's oh. watching the show right now. You just mentioned Roger. Roger literally is watching the show right now. What's up, Roger? Thank you for watching. Happy um, belated birthday, Roger. Yeah, he just had a birthday. Laura Fawner, the executive chef and soon-to-be owner at Dooner's Restaurant, is watching the show right now. John Craig, the co-owner of Seville Hop on Tour, is watching now. Guys, give it a like and give it a share on any of the channels that you're watching. Turn that entire first segment into the first sizzle reel, please, Harris. A sizzle reel is a shorter clip that we cut from the show, and we'll send it to you guys. Um, Catherine, let me throw this to you, okay? So you, you love Andrea. You love being around your family. She has a great experience at UVA. She chooses to make her home here in Charlottesville. You guys leave New York City. Um, where you're having success, where you're pursuing a passion in art, how did you fulfill or continue following that, continue filling that passion tank when you moved to Charlottesville? Was it art? What, where did you, how did you fill that passion well, tank? Well, I love cooking and okay. I love food. Okay. And uh, for, as a form of art. It is. To put a plate together and do the best you can when you prepare food. And that was mainly my goal and our goal is to make good food and make people happy, basically, so that they leave feeling wow. And that's what we're still doing, and I'm a perfectionist when it comes to that. 
I love it. I'm in the kitchen. He's out there shaking hands. Shaking hands and <laughs> kissing babies, right? And making people I laugh. Too. But I do, <laughs> I, I do want to mention that I have five grandchildren and two granddaughters among them, and they're all athletes also. Oh, yes. Anastasia Asher graduated from UVA. She was a foot, she was a volleyball player at NC State, and then was on the rowing team at UVA. And then Emily, who graduated from NC State and married now with two little kids, she was a Western. She was on the um, hockey field and a champion and a, hockey, yep. and a track champion also. So I they're love all it. athletes. You're proud, a proud grandma. Yes, and I can brag because I'm a grandma. I know, I know, <laughs> and I like that you do that. I really do oh, like yeah. that. Claire, Only grandmas can brag. <laughs> Claire says, Bashir and Catherine created a beautiful wedding lunch for me in December. They're truly fantastic people. Um, <clears throat> how difficult was it for you to open a restaurant? We are entrepreneurs here. We're small uh, business owners. It was very easy. Was I it? I just thought yeah. that it's going to work. And so no I had no doubt, ever. no. Okay, man, well, that's amazing. See, because when I was working as a curator and art and assistant director at uh, New York at this art gallery, it was actually David Rockefeller Think Tank, the America Society on Park Avenue, and a friend of mine who was the head of the literature program and myself, we organized a big catering for David Rockefeller's party, and he didn't know we were doing it. That's big time. And after that, he said, this is the best catering I had. Yeah, he didn't know that us employees there were doing it. So that said, if I can do that, I can do anything in whatever I go as far as cooking and preparing food. I love it. I love it. So this is the start of the second sizzle reel. Her answer there, and continue to what I'm saying, asking to Bashir, how about you? When you were saying, let's open a restaurant in Charlottesville, what was going through your mind? We love the entrepreneurial journey here. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. But for me, it was kind of different. I grew up in a family where food and music were kind of passion. Boys will cook on Sundays. We will go to market, pick up the fish. Actually, one of the specialty as boys we developed was seafood. So we cook on Sundays and kept on going. And then when my parents uh, divorced, uh, my oldest brother became, we all got into the food because, you know, more or less my mother was not there. She was with her family. You know, she has health problems, uh, things like that. And then to compare it with the teaching, with teaching, with whatever we're doing in New York, is the creative aspect of it that prevails. We came to New York, we had the knowledge, we more or less used our experience, our culture, Brazil, North Africa, Mediterranean, France, all these things. And Katya and I put our head together. We came back from Charlesville. My wife would be watching the Food Channel. We'd sit down, we'd be writing recipes. And a lot of uh, items on our menu actually, contrary to the common uh, conception, are our own. We do the traditional with our own take on it. But we always try to keep in mind we're here for a purpose, give the best we can. And we always push in the envelope. I think you know that by visiting us. I love it. I mean, I love the freshness and, like I said, the hospitality. I love that you come around, and this is something that is, you do not see this at restaurants really anymore. Mm -hmm. The owner is coming around, meeting the folks at the table, not only checking in to see how their food and service is, but you literally can like offer an aspect of what's going on in their life, or you remember the last time they were there, or you understand that like maybe their kids' names or their wife's names or their husband's names or something that's going on in their life. It's this personal touch that's being lost probably because of the ubiquitous nature of these. Um, I just love going there. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't blame the phone for that. Okay, okay. I, I think it's one personality is different from another. Okay. I've always been interested... Uh, how should I say, like my wife tells me, you talk too much. But <laughs> it's just uh, something in me that likes to connect with people. It's genuine. Sometimes maybe I do it uh, too much, that aspect of it. But um, I'm not the only one in the family who has that. Uh, Alex, for example. He totally is, does. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. He has the entrepreneurial mind, the inquisitive mind, everything to make an entrepreneur. He was a leader right. in his field. So I, to make it simple, you know, we are genuinely interested in people. And one of the reasons we come outside, it's not uh, to check, hi, you're okay, how is the food? No, we just make sure that our regular customer, people who come back, don't, are not taken for granted. We care our customers, we care about people, that's how we are. I love it, how would you just- also, if I may answer, <clears throat> we don't do lunches also. Our dinner are better than our lunches. 
Friday, Saturday, they're really, Saturday's formal. The best of our food is the weekend. There you go. How would you describe Bashir's style as a restaurateur? And the restaurant, how's your husband? Careful. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he loves people and customers adore him. And uh, he is very sweet and a wonderful person. Of course, there is a little you know, sparkles in the kitchen when we cook together, but <laughs> it's not the cooking so much as organization, but uh, he's just special. Let me throw that to you. Talk to us or spotlight the dynamic when you have a busy Friday or Saturday night. You're in the back, Bashir's talking, shaking hands, kissing babies, that making people gets, laugh. That gets uh, like uh, electricity, the positive and the negative. <laughs> Tell me about that. Because you get fired up. Actually, yeah. <laughs> As they I say, do. can't take the heat in the kitchen, get out. Yeah, actually, I do. I do I'm the one who is the nasty one. <laughs> no, but Katie, there's a very um, big part on weekend in the kitchen. Even though I'm in the kitchen working, I have to be outside. You know, and also I do the bartending sometimes. You know, more or less, uh, my, as my wife said, you have to be out there. I do feel like it's a must. I'm extremely organized. Yeah, you can't take people as just numbers coming, eat goodbye. I welcome them. You know, if I know them, more or less I engage them in something more or less we share with. It's good for the business, it's good for us too. We do argue on Saturdays. And if you come for dinner, you hear that, no, it's I natural. don't want this. No. I don't want this. She's, she's incredible, she's picky. She's my best critic. Whenever I come up with a new recipe, like I say, oh, the staff say, oh, it's great. Kathy calmly comes to me and says, I think it needs something. That's good. I love that. Yeah. That's how my wife is. And yeah, and it's when important. He, it is oh, because he does grounded. a lot of wonderful food, and I tell him it's very excellent. But when there's something that doesn't go well, I said, no, I don't think it's up to par. And then we change, he changes oh, it. Which changes. She keeps me grounded. I love that. And I love that because the worst case scenario would be to just say, yes, it's great, send it out when you know it can be better. No. Right? That's correct. I love that about you. I truly, truly love that For about example, you. For example, it's not a plug. Uh -huh. This Friday we have uh, Beleza Brazil. Uh -huh. They're coming, coming this Friday. And she's making some food that actually, Umberto is Brazilian, and she's going to be making Brazilian food, oh. feijoada. And Umberto tells me, oh my God, her feijoada is standing. Because Kat is so critical, so, uh, I mean... Uh, and that's a really test. honor when he says that because he's from Northern Brazil test. and uh, he knows feijoada. Right. That's the Brazilian national black bean stew. And uh, I always make it when they play. He knows it inside and out. You got a lot, and that's the end of the second sizzle reel right there. You got a lot of restaurant owners watching. Wilson Ritchie says hello. Oh, give him my regard. He's yeah. a great guy. Wilson Ritchie's watching oh, right he's now. He's an innovator. He really is. Chrissy Benninger of the Bluegrass Grill is watching right now. Um, she gives it a like. Guys, give the show a like and a share on any of the Facebook channels that you're watching now, please. Um, let's start this, and this will be the, the start of the third sizzle reel, Harris. Okay, and I want to do it on the downtown mall. Okay? Talk to us of how you've seen Start Open Edit. And Bashir, I'll start with you. How have you seen the downtown mall change since mm. you've started and launched a business downtown? I'm going to try to be as positive as I can. Sure. You can do anything you want. Thank you. Yeah. There are many elements to take into account. The mall is a thriving community. Okay? But it has changed. Uh, forgive me for the newcomers, but when I came to Charlottesville, there is this gentle um, cultural trait of the Charlottesvillian that are adored. The politeness, the, you name, they engage you, hi, how are you, thank you, the thank you was uh, thank you, madam, thank you, sir. And uh, when you drive on the, the road, for example, or you, you go anywhere in the mall, the, at that time people will open the door for you, even if you're a guy, uh, open the door for you, uh, pol treat you politely, and they're very cool, calm, it's amazing. Now I feel that tension driving from the mall home, or I feel it dealing with people sometimes, they're impatient, they don't have that patient dealing with the, the pharmacist at CVS, or the coffee place, they're like, instead of waiting gently for the coffee, they become impatient, the bank. That's a trade that's more or less came uh, recently. It's not a negative, but I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry, you have to have patience in life, you cannot be, uh, a speedy Gonzalez, I mean, everything falls in your hand, you have to have, uh, but in general, I noticed something, an improvement in terms of the quality of the food. 
Um, when we started, there was Thomas Rahal, there was uh, Vincent from uh, Bizu, there was a At fellow. At the Metropolitan? Who, yes. Yeah. There was a fellow who used to have memory in company. There was a small group of people who were more or less delivering credible food. There weren't many. So, you know? So, oh, yeah. With of Dave? Of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Dave, Thomas. Yeah. You know. Dave Simpson. Yes. Yeah. A late good man. Right. And uh, now we do have, uh, initially, um, please don't mistake me, don't take me uh, the wrong way. Initially, we had a small focus on extremely quality food. Now we still have quality, but there's more quantity than quality. I have to say with honesty, I visited some places, kind of was below my expectation. But the regular places I went to visit, it's a pleasure, quality is still there, consistency. There are places like that, thank God. And you have high expectations coming from New York City, who's undoubtedly the culinary like epicenter or culinary mecca of the country. I mean, there's restaurants everywhere. And when you have competition like that, Catherine, in New York City, the, the best rise to the top. Um, same question for you and anywhere you want to go. Charlottesville and downtown and how you've seen it change. Well, I think that Charlottesville grew enormously in population. And uh, it's uh, more impersonal right now, downtown because of that. And therefore, people don't know each other and they don't interact with each other. So I, that's the way I see the problem that we have right now, basically. And um, you walk down and you, most of the time we don't know anybody anymore. And there is no interest to get, no one has the interest really to get to know each other. What either. do you attribute that change to? To the overpopulation, the Probably population, fun. I mean, Charles was growing and growing, except for the roads right. and infrastructure, right. but everything else is growing. That's totally true. And, um, and I think that's one of the main problems, the way uh, I see let it. Let me add something. My sure. is very right. This is a very sensitive point. I like that. When we were at the time when Bizu, Thomas, we were small, we used to go and eat in each other's person restaurant. We got to know each other without any judgment, without anything. Just knowing another professional, another you colleague. You love food, right? Oh, yeah. I used yeah. to go on regular Saturdays to uh, uh, Vincent at Bizu. I used to go to Rapture to Thomas Rahal. I used, we used to know each other. We come, Barbara Schifflet used to come with other guys. You know, We don't see that anymore. We see some people from time to time, or the fellow from, uh, excuse me, uh, drawing a blank. Uh, Which restaurant? The restaurant by the fountain. Zocolo? Zocolo. Ivan. Forgive me, guys. Ivan, forgive yeah. me. Ivan Rekash. He's amazing. I, yeah. Right? yeah. Matt used to yeah. come with his kids. Yeah. Ivan used to come with his kids. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. But now when we feel that distance like that. You see, you see people, but they're too busy, too busy. We, we try to make our time and visit our time and visit other places in spite of the old age. I love it. Not I love it. Without me. L me <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Keep the sizzle reel going here, Harris. Let me throw this to you. Charlottesville, and, and I routinely say this on the show, um, it's the, one of the best things that's happened to Charlottesville and one of the worst things to happen to Charlottesville. When we started getting press to be the best place to live in the country. Right. Okay. So this is what happened. And I'll throw it to you. Um, best place to live in the country. This press was all over the country. Okay, we started having a lot of New Yorkers and a lot of Yankees and a lot of folks from the West, a lot of folks from the South, everywhere, move to Charlottesville. And this was about 15 years ago or so. And then next thing you know, and it's good for, good for us in right. some ways, because our home prices went in increased. Right. Because that we got more true. people coming in. That is true. Okay, we have more people patronizing potentially our businesses. Some of the downfalls of that are, is you got some overpopulation, you got a lot of crowded roads, you got a lot of competitions in a lot of different categories. Specific restaurants are a very competitive category now. Oh, yeah. How have you seen, let me throw this to you, Catherine. When, when Charlottesville started getting the press for best place to live in the country, what changes did you start to see? Well, the traffic on the roads, basically. Yeah. That was it. Um, just very, a lot of people don't like to come downtown uh -huh. because of the parking problem. And the traffic problem and the parking problem. They said they don't want to struggle to look for a parking lot for a long time. And the parking garage is packed. It's like we came late today because we're not open on Monday, and we couldn't. Even, and we have membership. We couldn't even find a space to park and before noon. I mean, so customers, you know, a lot of them won't come down. What do you think, Bashir? Um, Good answer. In Charlottesville, there's another element that's changing the whole dynamic: is gentrification. Mm -hmm. That kind, because I remember when I, when I lived in New York, I went to NYU, 
When Mayor Koch was the mayor there, they started more or less displacing the poor from a certain neighborhood, and uh, they moved to Hoboken, wherever, and said there was a shortage of help because uh, people couldn't afford there. I said the same phenomenon more or less happening in Charlottesville. For example, you mentioned the price of real estate. Fine, if you can afford it, have it. A few years back, maybe 12 years ago, we hosted a party for 16 newcomers to Charlottesville. I had a discussion with one of the uh, two people. Uh, I'm not going to go into details, sure. but I was kind of shocked coming from New York when the, the bottom line of prices these people were uh, offering, when they said, what can you get for such a set? That's unheard of uh, when I came to Charlottesville. You can buy a palace. You know, and then I look at it, okay, these people are gonna buy this house, what is gonna to happen to the workers? Who, where are they gonna move? Those, those who, I mean, like, for affordable housing. Policemen, becoming, and yeah. EMTs, and Thank teachers. You. People who run the city, right. people who make, keep city The backbone. Alive. Yeah, oh, I'm not against uh, more or less, uh, more or less modernism, more expansion of uh, real estate things, I'm on but there is another, segment of the population we have to bear in mind, you know, like for affordable housing, because we need waiters, we need, as you said, fire people, and all that stuff. That's kind of scary. In the county where we live, fine, there's no surprises, but you come to Charlotte. You live in Amaral County? I live in Earlysville. Earlysville, we Actually, live in Amaral County too. My house is on the market. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we just fixed it, everything. It's a nice house. Ideal. It's a plug. <laughs> yeah, do it. I love it. He's a salesman. I love no, it. It's ideal for either a writer or a family. It's secluded. It's like a British house. You can see it from the street. Yeah. But uh, I love Charlottesville in spite of what I just said. You know, for example, um, you talked about uh, Charlottesville being named best uh, city. We've been fortunate just in June. I told you about the article, Five Reasons to Visit Charlottesville. Yeah. Wilson was, uh, Reiki was mentioned, his place. Uh, four season, okay, which is great. We were mentioned also for the, our food and baklava. So, more or less, it is. It was so redeeming to see us still relevant after all these years. I love it, yeah. as you should be. Yes. That right there is the end of the third sizzle reel. It's fantastic. I'm going to throw this to you. Jehu Martin's watching right now. Thank oh, you for Jehu. watching, Jehu. D. Claudia Zarpalan says we oh. are going to come on Friday for food and to see. Beleza Beleza Brazil. Brazil. Beleza music. Okay. Incredible. We love Bashir and Catherine. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys. Um, if you would like me to relay a message to Catherine or Bashir, I'm happy to do it here on the program. Just give it a like and give it a share on any of the channels that you're watching. Hello, James Watson, Aaron Slow, Mary Blake, Colleen Tyler, Earl Gray Jacobs, Keith Smith, Lauren Linsky, a lot of folks watching right now. Um, throw this to you. Um, post August 12th, in pre-August 12th and post-August 12th. Open-ended question. I ask this question to everybody. Um, I've been in Charlottesville for 19 years, okay? I was outside, own, own most of this building here. I have a 15-month-old son, and I wanted to relay to my son when he got to history class um, what happened in Charlottesville. Say, so like, your dad was there, and your dad saw this happen. Um, so I could help him, give him, share perspective with him, along with what he was studying in the book. Okay, um, open-ended question. How, your thoughts on that topic and how you saw Charlottesville change after August 12th? Um, I tell you honestly, I haven't, I mean, Bashir will disagree with me, but I haven't seen that much change, that much change over that particular issue. Okay. Um, I haven't really. I mean, it was awful what happened. And we, at that time, had a catering event, actually, that evening. Wow. Because we agreed to it, f like, a year before. Sure, of course. From out of state, from, was it New York, which year? Chicago. 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 Uh -huh. So, and they were staying at the uh, Omni. Um, yes. So they all walked over, and over six, about 60 people were the only ones open at night. Wow. Yes. And the police department, the state police, were upstairs from us. We were downstairs. Wow. <laughs> but we had no choice, and we were... We were a little bit worried, but everything was smoothly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was an awful thing what happened, and I see it on the news all the time, and for good reasons, they keep, should keep, they should continue showing that newsreel, how horrible it is to go through this for any town. What do you think, Bashir? Um, just to, just to link it to my wife said, actually that night, I got kind of nervous because I was, 
with Thomas Rahal and then from, uh, we were at the forefront there because we wanted to see what's going on. It's our town, man. You can't be passive. That's how I felt. Silence is consent. Right. Everybody was there. Dan opened his place, opened for coffee and everything for the, for the policeman. Was that Mudhouse? No, Dan from the country. Uh, country okay. Uh, country, Blue Ridge uh, yeah, Country Blue Ridge Store. Country Store. Yeah, Thomas Rahal, guys, formerly of Moss, now of Quality Pie. Yeah, Thomas. Yeah, great there. guy. We, oh, everybody was down there. Thomas was filming, everything. But to, to link with my wife, uh, to, uh, I was kind of nervous when I called uh, the emergency number we were given. I said, look, I have a group of 50 people coming from the Omni crossing the mall, 5 o'clock. What should I do? Uh, is it safe? When the guy told me, oh, yeah, they're going to cross at their own risk. And lo and behold, those people came to the restaurant. When I apologized, I told them, I'm sorry. I just, you know, they told me, we're from Chicago. We're used to this. Don't worry. Wow. Yeah. But what I loved about that event, I, we, Kathy and I came in to work on the, uh, we came in to work on the, uh, the catering. I look at my patio. It was all destroyed. Chairs upside down. The plants uprooted. The next thing I know, Henry Graff from WNBC. NBC, NBC 29. 29. Came in down with the camera, put that. Roger, uh, the week that followed, Roger mobilized a group of people to come for lunch. Roger Voice and I? Yes. Watching right now? Yes, Roger organized that. It was mind blowing. Uh, Jane Heblick surprised me the same day with surprise flower and the outpouring of support from the community. Because people love Just you. Just confirm, oh, I love them. Just confirm we live in a great community. But but you know, Charlottesville is great, and we're, we're just surviving this really well, because that's the way it is. We're going to get, we are just as, we're going to get better and better, no matter what. That is true. It, it, it started, this is one of the, and, I, and I'm like you guys, I try to find the positive of a situation, okay? What I have found from A12, this is what I found, and I'll throw it to you, Bashir. Okay. I found that it's galvanized the community, and brought us together. That is true. I have found that it started conversations that needed to be had. One of the conversations that very much is prevalent and discussed, you've already touched on because you're a smart man, is affordable housing. Affordable housing is being discussed more now than ever, and I think that is a positive byproduct of August 12th. I think mm -hmm. the entrepreneurs and the business owners and, and the people in the community have come together stronger. We see someone like um, Joe Biden make his campaign announcement on that he's going to run for president, and he's using footage of August 12th in his campaign announcement. And that frustrated me. Yeah. You know? I'll, I'll throw I all that to you. Yeah, I agree with you. Because you have, you have to bear in mind the ideology, the way of thinking, the message brought by those guys on 12th is un American. I don't care which part of uh, the American society you are, whatever, that's not the America that I knew. When I was in Algiers prior to moving to, to the U.S., there was a time uh, Nixon was, being impe was impeached, you know, that was, and I said, my God, this is a great country because I studied American culture and, uh, and uh, British, like compared uh, literature. I said, this is a great country if a president can be removed of power because we had that in mind, that concept in spite of uh, the notion of democracy that the president is God, you can't just remove them. And the message that was brought in by those guys was met with the resistance, but every, I tell you, I, I felt that thought with the, every fiber of my heart. I grew up in their colonialism and I knew the value of human rights, the basic, you know what I mean? And then that allowed me, as you said, galvanize the community. I've never seen the community come so together as on that day, and it still is. The mm -hmm. only thing, economically, it affected us because there was a message being dis disseminated at that time that. Uh, Boycott Charlottesville, Charlottesville is this. My granddaughter, Emily, who lives in North Carolina, told me, uh, related to me a story. People who worked with her in this advertisement company thought that those guys were part of Charlottesville. Right, right. And she had to, def to explain to My people family that, no. that lives, my wife's family is from Long Island. Long Island, okay. Yeah. Yep. And they asked me on the holidays about that. It's like, is this how Charlottesville is? That's yes, right. And I said, no. I said, the people, the people that came in here, the gentleman who's, not gentleman, I, I changed that word, the terrible guy who, who, who is chosen to spend the rest of his life in jail, uh, Mr. James Fields, drove eight hours from Ohio 
to do murder in a, what I saw as a, as, a, as a terrorist attack. Sure. Okay? And I had to explain to my family in, in, in Long Island, my in-laws and extended family, that this is not the folks that live in Charlottesville. Well, I was surprised that other people thought that because to me it was very clear that they were not from Charlottesville. Is that because we were here? Uh, the way I saw it on, on TV, it, it was very clear that those guys were coming Outsiders. from outside. And they were marching through the university. I mean, university students never march through like that. Or even, it's never happened yes, before. Any yeah. towns, Charles Williams, to be doing that. So okay. I was surprised that people thought that. And you have to take into account um, the historical factors. Look what, I'm sorry to do that, but look what we have in the White House. The message that these guys were bringing in into Charlottesville is something. It's like we're going back to, um, excuse me, the time of the invisible man, Raphael Lisson. If you're white, you're right. If you're brown, stick around. If you're black, stay back. That's what we, this president would send us back to that era, which is nothing. I don't know any Charlottesvillian who would espouse that kind of uh, ideology. I told that was, you. Oh, that was pure hate. I mean, this yeah. is a Jefferson town, Jefferson oh, gosh. Air, I place. Love I Jefferson. mean, uh, no one with that type of mentality would be. How did oh. it impact? Let's. You got a lot of people that are giving you some love here. Daniel Lin, oh. Bashir, and Kathy are the best. I love to eat Thanks, at Bashir's. Dan. Ezra John Hamilton, uh, Bashir, I absolutely love you. <laughs> thank okay. you. Uh, we're gonna thank um, Kyra Martin, uh, Shaki uh, Sackett. My God, that's from watching Germany. right now. Yeah. Uh, we have folks from outside the country watching right now. Hmm. Um, give it a like and a share on any of the pages you're watching. If you'd like me to relay a comment. To, to Bashir and Catherine, I'm happy to do it. Bob Schott is watching. Oh. James Watson is watching. Kit Ashy from Monsoon is watching right now. Greg Slater of Nesrility watching right now. Um, how did it impact business? How did it impact business, do you think? You wouldn't take a shot at that. You wouldn't like which the Business in general, our business. Post, in post August. Post. Oh, post. Yeah. Um, well, it impacted some, right, Bashir? I'll have to disagree with you, sweetheart, because I did affect us, even now. Yeah. Even now, people, you know what, once I, I'll tell you honestly, I got a phone call, okay. you know, for reservation, and the person tells me, that was a few months ago, is it safe to come to Charlotte? Really? Yeah. I was like this shocked. This was a few months ago. When I told my wife and I told the staff, I said, oh my God, it can't be possible, because um, a lot of our clients forgot to tell you on weekends because our dinner come from outside Charlottesville. Uh -huh. We get people from D.C., Fredericksburg, everything. So the there's all of, no regular people come okay. in, like professor, universities, things like that. Okay. And but economically, I'm I feel it. We're not doing the numbers that we used to do. Actually, we more or less we try to. We've been working on reinventing ourselves. We have a lot of new things coming on the on the menu, everything. But still, I feel it, and I feel it when I see all the restaurants across the street from me. Not very busy. That's. Uh, I'm not talking about July. July is normal. Everybody's on vacation. But prior to that, and you get yourself, am I doing something wrong? And then you see a group come in, and then they more or less they reassure you. But still, yeah, it affects the. Well, more. also the competition. I mean, when uh, we started the business, uh, the little hole in the wall across the nook. Um, where was it across from the nook? Where, where is, is it at now? Where the Korean is, place is okay. right now. 14 East Men, where Maru where is Maru now. Maru is now. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, we, there were about 30 restaurants downtown. Okay. And now there are over 100, as I counted, just in downtown area, or more than 100 eateries. So that's like a big pie that we all got a little slice out of. Yeah. So basically that has to do with it too. That's what Vincent said. It's uh, funny. He told me that, yeah. Yeah, about the pie. The, the pie. pie. Yeah. yeah. Relay, you. you relay. That's yeah. what I was going to say. A few years ago when I opened my new place, Vincent comes in, we're talking about business general. He said it's the same pie and we have to divide it. And he said, no, it's the, the slice is going to be <laughs> right. slim. It's right. Yeah. But it's not like that. We have the new shopping malls that open. They took business from the mall, the vineyard. Take the vineyard is in the, the breweries. Mall, everything. And Stonefield, mm -hmm. Fisher yeah. Station. But, but the, mainly the vineyards yeah. and the breweries. Yeah, yeah. But the mall is exceptional. The mall is exceptional. It, it's vibrant. It has its own energy, its own more or less. Um, we've been hurt by that 12. You know, the city actually is aware of it. They're doing their best to help. And I remember they even helped to finance some uh, campaign ad. Yeah, to fight that negative uh, aura surrounding the right. mall. 
But we st there's a lot to be, to be done. We're still not out of the uh, impasse. Do you believe, and I have, a, I have some messages coming in here from the phone, um, throw this to you here. And this is a good question from one of your uh, regulars. Um, it's not my mentor, Bill, but it's another Bill. He says, Jerry, I love your show. Uh, will you ask Bashir and Kathy if they still believe in the future of downtown Charlottesville? I do. <laughs> okay. I do I'll tell you why. I do too. Um, when you go to those shopping centers like Stonefeed and everything, excuse me the expression, it's sterile. Mm. That's my feeling. It's very sterile. Sterile. Yeah. The mall has this warm that attracts you by its history, by its building. It's charm. And also, you, t you speak to people in the, like in the street like that. They're engaging. They're not afraid. Go to that mall. They're very impersonal. Mm. Uh, I, listen, I was offered to move to Barracks Road. I was offered to move to Stanton. I was offered, you know, the well finest. By no. developers? Uh, to one of them was a developer. Okay. I did not because my commitment was here with Kathy. We talked about it. We discussed it. We love this community. We're staying here. But those who would doubt the future, because when Stonefield was being built, there was this uh, idea circulating, it's going to kill the downtown mall. No, the downtown mall is unique. If you don't believe in it, move out of the mall. I 110% agree. And, and, you know, I've had folks, so, you know, we, over the course of the years, have been scooping up this building here. And our business is based here. I hope to pass it to my son. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, we manage it, the renters out of here. And literally, it's a big position of our, like, retirement. Yes. Okay? And I try to pass it to my son. And I've had people, including my parents and other folks, say, are you not worried what's happening? And I am not. And, and Kathy, I'm going to throw this to you. I am not worried. And why I'm not worried is because I think this Charlottesville, the downtown mall, is the essence and the heartbeat and the epicenter of our community. And I think when you go downtown and you run into Bashir or you run into Mike Rohde at Rapture, yes. or you run into Wilson Richme, or, or Chris and Benninger, Chrissy Benninger at the Bluegrass Grill, or, or, or anyone like us that is committed to waving the flag positively of downtown, that's gonna spread across the community. And we just, we are passionate about this. You do not see that same passion about Stonefield. You do not see that same passion of Barracks no. Road, Fifth Street Station. It's just not there it, because it, it's people like us that are making downtown great. Throw yeah. that to both you guys. Right, ahead, it's very man. Jeffersonian and it's the whole sense over here ref reflects that. Yeah. Downtown. And it's very charming. And that's very important, that charm. Um, I miss it. The, but it needs more parking and more access. It so does. Is that, do you think, the biggest issue right now with downtown? I would think Always it's one been. of the big issues. Been. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people said, I don't want to go down, right. down there because I, I have problems parking, finding a place. They tried to solve the prime Rixie, but did a great job with the city with the parking. And there was controversy to remove it, but I know they're always trying to do it. Yeah. But uh, the, um, to compare, to highlight really the difference between those, uh, those uh, shopping center is there. Those were built by big yeah, outfits. Outside developers. Here is vibrant, individual. Each one of them has a business. Each one of them has has to survive. Tony owns the building at Chaps. Thank you. Bill owns the professional center. Yes. Ludwig owns a lot of the downtown mall. And I'll tell you something. Yeah. Even though Kathy and I were suffering, suffering economically, we're thinking about retirement. We can't afford it now. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm honest. Well, you have to tell the truth. We, we still, I still, we still believe it's going to get better. I do too. We still believe in get, it's going to get better. Economically, well, we just have to ride the, the tide like everybody else, but it's going to get better. And I firmly believe on the mall. I, I agree. How about, how about um, University of Virginia's role here in the community? Mm. That's a good question, right? Well, yeah, we do have our professors and students that it's come customers. and eat dinner on Friday night and Saturday night. It's quiet now, but when school opens, yes, we do have, they love our place, they love uh, the fact that we have those killing rugs on the walls, and uh, sort too. of charming, and the colors, so we do have a lot of university people who really enjoy coming to our that place. That is true. Not, not only the food, but the, the ambiance. Should yeah. UVA, and we have a new president and Jim Ryan, should UVA be more involved with dictating the future of the community? Yes, definitely. Not dictating the future of the community. Okay. Enhancing but participating. Okay. Talk to me about that. Enhancing That's it. That's a like, good word. For example, um, I remember a story once. Um, uh, Giovanni, who owns uh, Vita the Note, the pizza yeah. place. Great pizza wanted, spot. Yeah, wanted to be part of the vendors 
you know, they have all those vendors there, pizza he wanted. It was hard for him to get there. Even though with taxpayers' money, I mean, helping the university, they had, um, I mean, more outside vendors, outside of Charlottesville vendors had access to that, I mean, to a presence there versus the locals. The tax base comes from university, comes also from here. There should be better representation like if you vehicle, and also for vendors like us, we used to do a lot of catering to university from time to time, department have to go outside mm -hmm. the norms to hire us because they have all outside the institutions between the vendors and the customers. And they demand payment, they demand this and that. Um, it'd be great if the university was in direct mm -hmm. contact with the, with the people of the community. No intermediary, directly. It's, it's part of ours. But I have to credit the university for one thing, is the sense of ethic it created in, uh, in business. It is amazing. In all our years, since 1997, we have never had the problem of uh, people not paying their bills, sometimes they forget, sometimes, you know. It's incredible the amount of... Uh, integrity. Integrity and responsibility people have here. We never had that, program, that mm -hmm. problem. That's something, I'm, for me, I attributed to the university, the president. I think you're ethics. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's basically... Honor it. system. The honor code. Yeah. Yeah. But the university can do more. I love that. I love that. We have some questions coming in here. Um, guys, give it a like and a share on any of the comments on any of the channels that you're watching. We're live on seven Facebook pages here on the I Love Seville Network. This question is coming in here. Um, Kathy and Bashir, we love your restaurant. My daughter is thinking about opening up a restaurant of her own. Is there any advice that you would give her? She's 26 years old. She obviously has watched the Food Network, and she's lived in Charlottesville with all these fine restaurants. So she's looking for some advice. That's a tough business to get into, isn't it, Kathy? Well, right now it is. Yeah. Right? right, and uh, they have to, to be careful where they're going to choose to open. Yeah, like so that's the, good advice. What do you mean, location, location, location? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Location, location, yeah. location. No knowledge. No, know your stuff. Know your clientele. Know what you're going to uh, have an identity as far as food goes. Do not duplicate what exists. You can do it if you want, but I strongly believe. Do your homework. Money is going to be the issue at the beginning. It's going to be a lot of work. Don't expect any miracles for the first six months. You reach your breaking even point, hopefully. But don't expect to be rich doing it. Do it for the passion, but not for the money. That's good advice right there. Spoken for a man who's been doing it for 23, 24 years? Plus experience in New York. <sighs> so you know where you're... I had the right people, that's all. I was blessed. You, you've done it in two of the most competitive markets in the country. That is true. New York, New York is a good school. It's a great school. Yeah? Yeah. Compare like and contrast the city to Charlottesville when it comes to this Oh, topic. the pace. The pace is yeah. wonderful here. Yeah. You don't have to go walk fast wherever. But we are actually, it's funny you said that. We are like a mini New York uh, in our place. Most of this place, New Yorkers come to our place. Right. And we all reminisce. <laughs> and the New Yorkers are resilient. They have a good sense of humor. <laughs> and, uh, I have to They're interactive. Yeah, I have to tell this story. Please. Um, I have good neighbors from New York in Earliesville, Sam and, and uh, Jackie. They came once to the restaurant. And the uh, regular couple, Bob Anderson and Dominique, good client of ours, brought them there to introduce them and everything. And then they, I offered them some money. They said, no, uh, now we'll uh, just wait. In. And I went like this, joking, ah, this cheap New Yorkers, cheap client. People from Salisbury, they were with them, got offended. But the two New Yorkers laughed their head off. <laughs> that shows you how New Yorkers are. And then I explained to the guys. And you know, it's normal. You have to have a thick skin. We got a comment coming in. This one's coming in from Daniel Baptiste. He says, even if you're not hungry, stop by and talk to Bashir. He's one of the nicest guys around in Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, that's so kind. Tell him, that's I'm, so tell him I'm going to charge Dan him $5 passes. to talk to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, <laughs> Kathy, tell, tell Daniel what you just said. Come on, talk to him <laughs> on the mic. He's watching right now. I'm going to charge $5 to talk to him. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're saying get back to the kitchen. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no. Daniel, I need new kitchen. beers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you guys relax? What do you guys do for fun? Well, we were blessed that we bought this little house a long time ago in the middle of the woods, and it came with a pool. Oh, And very not nice. that we were you know, interested. The house was really, we did a lot of repairs on that old house. May and I correct the pool you? Is the like house a little, came with the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a little oasis back there in the middle of 
one acre of all trees. One acre in Earliesville in Almoral County yes, with a pool? with no neighbors. Oh, good for, we with no it. neighbors? I'm going to make the plug for you. <laughs> this home is going to sell like hotcakes. Trust me. It ought to, but yeah. uh, it's uh, really a little oasis, and okay. uh, it, we relax like that. I love By the pool? Yes, by okay. the pool. Do you have a, an adult beverage in your hand? If so, which ones? <laughs> I like I like I like I like a good beer from somewhere in Charlottesville. We usually have and I like a good nice bourbon. Wine. Oh yeah, Dan who just uh, who just called in Baptiste is our yeah, supplier from Blue Ridge for, Beverage Company. Yep. Yeah, he brings me uh, good beers. He yeah, bring, I, I have to say that he, he takes care of it. He says, Kathy, five dollars an hour is too low. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say an hour. <laughs> she said per conversation, Daniel. <laughs> oh, this has been a great interview. What are some of your favorite restaurants, Kathy? Um. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys know all the owners. Yeah, you know. That's why we. Have That's to why be you careful. have to say careful. Uh, it depends. We don't really go out to eat much. Uh, I do like a once in a blue moon. Bashir loves hamburgers. Although I don't make it, I make oh, good hamburgers gosh. at home, but I don't allow him to have any. <laughs> but uh, was it burger burger bar or burger batch? Burger batch uh, in Stonefield. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've been there, and okay. they have some nice. Fries and burgers. Okay, and, but, but uh, we don't really go out much to eat. Yeah, yeah. but burger back, they're not consistent. You have to admit. Sometimes we go the burgers yeah. out of this world. Sometimes okay. Are, no, there are. Every restaurant I visited now has more or less something good. I can't say that I, we have negatives. I ate them. Um, uh, a lot of restaurants in Charlottesville. No, there's no such thing as a bad stuff. Some of them, I'm not going to even talk about them. Sure. You know, they more or less take advantage of, of people. But we do have uh, good, uh, well, I good think, food in Charlottesville. I really. think that um, they should have a little bit better Chinese food in Charlottesville. My wife says that too. And uh, even Indian f uh, cuisine, because yeah. of course in Manhattan we had the best Indian oh, yeah, the and the best. best Chinese. Right. So we're a little bit, you know. She says the spoiled. same thing about the Chinese food. Yeah. They yeah. really need a yeah. good Chinese restaurant around yeah. here. E ethnic wise, my wife is right. Indian and Chinese, we need something. Okay. Actually, you're gonna laugh. You know, I, I do world cuisine. I do uh, Indian, I do a lot of things. Actually, Kathy and I, we're, two weeks from now, we're gonna start doing international nights. We're going back to the old stuff we used to have in small place. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna be more or less high, highlighted. Anyway, when an Indian customers, they were a group of eight or others, tell you that you make the best Indian cuisine in Charlottesville, is a shocker. <laughs> We do it at night, like sometimes we make tandoori as special. Well, that's, I think that's, that's two shocker. things. That's a testament to your talents and also really a, maybe a testament that we need some more Indian on the market. Is that or right? Indian food yeah. Or good magic. one, I should say quality. Yeah. Uh, Indian food is magic. Yeah. You know, the technique, oh, for example, yes. the way we cook, we borrow something from the Indians that's called the tarka. Tarka is when you more or less use spices, submit them to uh, different liquids, to different temperatures, affects them how they react with the, the meat, whatever you want to pre present. It's a Tarka, T-A-R-K-A. -A. Lauren is saying on the feed, I 100% agree with Kathy. There is no good Chinese in Charlottesville. I agree with you. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's out there here. We've filled an hour. This has been such a pleasant, pleasant, pleasant show. I want to close the show with you guys getting final words anywhere you want to go. You can talk about family, you can talk about the restaurant, you can talk about the market, you can talk about Jefferson and the news about, Je you can talk about anything you possibly want um, I'm going to start with him. Yeah, you ask the question, how do we relax? Okay, I love music, I love reading, and I also write poetry to my old age. Like for me, the best relaxation time is when you put me surrounded by Bach. That's all I ask on the planet. Bach for me is God. Bach? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then followed by jazz. Jazz is my love. Uh, you can put any serious jazz musician. I love music, any shape, any, the only thing I stay away from the commercial stuff. And reading, I read a lot, and I'm blessed to have a grandson who reads a lot, uh, Christian Asher. He is cerebral, he's an intellectual, he just graduated from UVA, and we have, and also he followed the same uh, field of studies that I was blessed and lucky to have done in, uh, in, uh, in New York. Uh, basically, the only thing, maybe a last message I will finish with, I need customers. <laughs> Coda Bashirs. That's what I'm honest. Coda Bashirs, guys. The food and is amazing. Thank you. Final word? Right. My final word is that I'm blessed with a wonderful family. Yes. My daughter and son in law, and my five grandkids, and my two little great grandsons. And uh, they're all just very special 
people are great athletes and intellectually great, and uh, they love us, and they come and support us all the time at the restaurant and work at the restaurant whenever they can. Oh, I yes. They all work I've seen the Alex restaurant. working there. And you just said Christian's going to All of them work there. Christian, yeah. Michael, Michael. Yeah. Emily, and Anna. All of them work there, um, off and on, through school and other times. And they and still, we when we are on stuck, them. I was tough on them. when they stuck, when we're stuck, they all come run in and them. help. I love, I love, I love my family. I love it. I can tell. That's impressive. <laughs> It's impressive. This show has been amazing. Support Bashir's. Go to this restaurant. It's absolutely fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous food. Great hospitality. Um, great kindness. Fresh, innovative, um, affordable. Sure. Um, our cuisine has one advantage. We very, very careful for dietary restrictions. If you have a problem with sugar, wheat, uh, dairy, you're more or less safe with us. We don't add all of that. We make everything from scratch. We don't add any of those things to our food. Um, Ray Cadell, who's a huge fan of you. Oh, I love Ray he Cadell. Said, he said, I'm sorry I'm late. I miss Bashir from Blackstones in Almoral Square. Yes, he's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, Ray Cadell, oh, you're Mr. getting Cadell, love from Bashir's here. Mr. Cadell, as yeah. a musician, man. Yeah, he's, he's a hell of a musician. Amazing. He's amazing. Roger says, we are all your family. That's We're true. We're all your family. That's true. Thank Roger. you. Roger Boynze watching right now. Oh, Thank you so he's much. He's a great yes. man. Yes. He is a great man. Roger is a great man. I really do mean that, Roger. I'm a huge fan of you on this program. Um, we close the show the same way every single time. And this entire interview will be archived, guys, on ilovesevil.com. We close the show the same way, and we ask you to embody the golden rule. We don't make it about religion. We make it about treating other people how you want to be treated yourself. It's a very simple concept, but it's a concept that should be emphasized and prioritized a bit more. It's the golden rule. And if we treat other people how we want to be treated ourselves, it's going to have this positive viral impact throughout the community. And I think Charlottesville and Central Virginia guys need that more than ever. We need it. Give it a thought, please. Um, we will see you tomorrow at 1230 on the I Love Seville show. And I'm checking my calendar very quickly. We have John Shaughnessy, the executive chef from Commonwealth Sky Bar. He was the executive chef at the Whiskey Jar. He's going to join us tomorrow. John Kluge is going to join us on Wednesday at 1230. And Yolanda Harrell of the New Hill Development Company, who's prioritizing and redeveloping the Star Hill neighborhood, is going to join us on Thursday. And then we have live music on Friday from Lily Garay, a Latin singer-songwriter hmm. who's making a huge impact in our community. Ooh, I'd love hmm. to hear. The I Love Seville show is all about the best of Charlottesville and putting positive attention on our community. We will see you tomorrow at 1230. Thank you so much. You did so well. Oh, thank you for having us. Uh, you so, good. so good. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you for much. having us, thank guys. You. Thank you. And thank you for bringing positive items about the, our community here. It's a must. People have to know how lucky they are in this community. I feel that way. I yeah, totally feel that way. Yeah, it's We're amazing. So lucky. We were so lucky. Uh, as I said, this that's why it's